Hi, my name is Bente, I'm the Norris Witch and you better get yourself a hot cup of tea or coffee or a snack because this will probably be a long one, like the first one, because we are doing a part two of my video on how your big three translate to your magical practice. So many of you loved that video. First of all, thank you so much. I'm very glad about it. And basically all of you were requesting this to be a series. So this is what I am doing today. So let's hop right into it. Because I want this to be a fair process, I will continue going through the Instagram requests first. Because with the first video, I got so many requests on Instagram and I did not even go through like, I think a tenth is what I said in the video, but there were so many requests and I did not, I could not possibly go through all of them in that first video. So I will continue with the ones that I got on Instagram originally and once I'm done with those, probably in the part three or something, part three, part four, I don't know. Uh, we will continue with the ones that I got under the first video because there were so many of you who requested their big three. So let's start. By the way, this is black tea with a little cinnamon stick. I love it so much. So <clears throat> first one, Leo Sun, Aquarius Moon and Gemini Rising. The first thing that I see is Leo and Aquarius. Both Leo and Aquarius are very, very creative. So I would guess that there is definitely some kind of crafty witchcraft involved or like some kind of art magic process. With the Aquarius and Gemini together though, both love change. Aquarius, as I said also a lot in the last video, Aquarius is kind of the the person who sees things that need to be changed, especially when it's like societal or systemic injustices and things like that, and who like go out on the streets protesting and request change and bring change. And Gemini, of course, needs change and always wants constant new things, new ideas, new projects. So I feel like those two would go very well together with some activism magic. I don't really know how to call that, but I feel like that is where it's it's not necessarily a practice itself, but I feel like that is a cause where your magical workings could go. Scotty apparently wants to be in the video today very badly. I will sadly have to cuddle the cat while continuing. All right, with a Leo sun, I would also guess that there's some kind of glamour magic involved, maybe some sex magic or something. But Leos are also extremely loyal. And with the Aquarius, I feel like there's probably a big sense for justice. So I don't know why, but those big three kind of speak to me in that way. Next one. Virgo, Sun, Taurus, Moon, Capricorn, Rising. That's a full on earth big three like you have all of the earth signs that is so cool all right with a taurus and the capricorn especially with a capricorn rising i feel like there is probably a lot of financial workings or like some kind of prosperity material gain success with the capricorn rising probably some like business magic something like that with the taurus moon and the virgo sun though there's of course also a lot of hearth and home magic you want to feel or you want your home to feel good and you want yourself to feel good in your home so definitely some kind of hearth and home magic like home protection things like that grounding probably is a big thing being in nature yeah definitely all of that good stuff next pisces sun virgo rising and capricorn moon that is very interesting, especially with a Pisces sun and a Capricorn moon, because Pisces is so emotional and sensitive and Capricorn is like not emotional and not sensitive at all. I would say a Pisces works better as a moon placement and a Capricorn better as a sun or rising placement. But now you have like a very emotional sign as your sun sign, but then a very unemotional sign as your moon sign, which is very strange, but um, sounds complicated. Uh, but okay, let's get back to the magical practice. 
Pisces Virgo Capricorn. For some reason I find this rather hard because if it had been a Capricorn rising or a Capricorn sun I would have said there's financial stuff or business magic or success magic or stuff like that and more like ceremonial stuff but it's a moon placement. I feel like that's not as strong then, like with a cap moon. Oh, that is so difficult because the Pisces and the Capricorn are kind of switched as to where they would fit better, I guess. <sighs> I would still say though with the Pisces sun, I would still say that there is more of a love for like divination and spirit work and traveling the other worlds, like things like that. Um, even though it's not the moon sign here. I would still say though with the Virgo and the Capricorn, it's probably more of a ceremonial approach, which is very interesting with the Pisces, because I feel like Pisces is extremely counter ceremonial magic. I don't know. I can't see a Pisces doing some kind of ceremonial stuff. But I still think with the Virgo and the Capricorn that probably still leads to more of a ceremonial approach, but probably still more inclined to work like with the other worlds and stuff. Maybe a little bit for success and things because of the Capricorn, but I feel like that's not the focus. So yeah, maybe, maybe there's like a more ceremonial approach to like spirit work and things like that. It exists. <laughs> All right, Cancer Sun, Leo rising. Taurus moon. This is a good one. This is a very good one. Okay, with the Taurus moon You definitely need a nice cozy home to feel good. So I would again say Definitely hearth, hearth and home magic like hearth witchery home witchery Especially also with the Cancer Sun that definitely makes a lot of sense um, with the Leo rising though, there is some badassery there, so I would guess Leo rising definitely like glamours. With the combination with Cancer and Taurus, I would not necessarily say there's too much art magic involved. I think with the Leo rising, it's more towards like the badass, I am the best self-confident stuff. Um, so definitely like, definitely glamours. With the Cancer Sun, and the Taurus moon. I could also see some healing magic maybe. Oh dang, uh, Aries, oh Aries, Leo rising and Cancer sun, love magic, <laughs> definitely, definitely some love magic. I would guess you probably do a lot of workings for or should do a lot of workings for your friends and family because Taurus, Cancer and Leo are all very, very loyal and just love and would do everything for their friends and families. So that is what I would say for you. All right, then we have Aries Sun, Scorpio Moon and Pisces Rising. That is very, very interesting, especially with the Aries Sun and Scorpio Moon because the Scorpio Moon probably leads to a lot of vengeful acts. So I would guess that there's probably a lot of painful workings involved when someone pisses you off. So ne not necessarily just out of spite, but like when someone goes against you, then you will go hardcore against them. So I would guess that there is definitely painful workings involved, probably also sex magic um, with Aries and Scorpio. With the Pisces rising though, that's interesting because like Pisces, I can't, I don't really see Pisces doing a lot of painful stuff, but with the Pisces rising and the Scorpio moon, there's definitely a lot of pull towards spirit work, especially like maybe a little bit of darker spirits, I don't know. Um, I feel like Scorpios are very inclined to work with their ancestors, maybe like demonology or things like that, possible, or like graveyard spirits, something like that. Definitely an inclination towards working with the other worlds and the inhabitants of the other worlds. So may maybe maybe you work with some of these entities to do painful workings, I don't know. But yeah, I would say painful stuff if someone pisses you off, uh, sex magic, uh, working with the other worlds, traveling the other worlds, communicating with spirits, working with spirits, maybe working with them for the painful, ba painful stuff, who knows. All right, 
My tea is getting cold, oh no. Can we please appreciate for a moment how much cat content you're getting right now? You're always asking for cat content and now Scotty blessed you with a lot of it. <laughs> okay, then we have Pisces Sun, Virgo Moon, Virgo Rising. First thing that comes to mind is healing magic with both Pisces and the double Virgo. Then the next thing that comes to mind is hearth witchery and home witchery and um, home protections and stuff like that again because of the virgo especially with like two virgo placements it's interesting with the pisces versus virgo because virgo is so practical and down to earth and more focuses on the here and now and the material and the physical whereas pisces is so inclined towards working with the other worlds like pisces usually lives in the other worlds and in the dream world 50% of the time at least. Uh, so they're definitely not practical and not living in the here and now and in the material. Ah, that's a little bit of a, of a contrast, but what about this? The inclination of Pisces to work with the other worlds and spirits combined with hearth magic and home magic from the Virgo placements, maybe that results in work with the house spirits. Here we have it. Work with the house spirits. <laughs> Definitely. For some reason, what pop popped into my mind with the double Virgo placement was, was working with like some kind of hard, hard, hard goddess. Dang, that was a hard word to say. A hearth and home goddess. So for example, uh, Hestia, I think is one of those. Frick, definitely. Maybe you could approach those, but yeah. House spirits. House spirits, I think that's that's where it's at. Or like local spirits, nature spirits, not necessarily gods or goddesses because like, I don't know, with a hearth and home goddess that could work, but I can't really see two Virgo placements working heavily with Odin or something like that. I don't know. I don't really see that, but like local spirits, some spirits that are actually here, like spirits that actually are around you all of the time and that you don't necessarily have to call upon to work with, that are not like as far away as gods or goddesses. Um, I feel like that would make sense. So house spirits, local spirits, plant spirits. Okay, now we have a Pisces Sun, Scorpio Moon, Leo Rising. The first thing that of course pops up for me is the Pisces and Scorpio combination, especially with a Scorpio Moon. Both are very, very, very otherworldly. They like to communicate with spirits, like have relationships with beings in the other worlds and also travel the other worlds, do like dream work divination, meditation, things like that. So everything that has to do with maybe also like trance states, breath work, maybe things like that. And that is actually the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, who is Aura. Aura, thank you so, so much for sponsoring once again, another one of my videos. I love working with Aura. I love using Aura. So let us head over to Sponsor Bento and Sponsor Bento will tell you what Aura is all about. Aura is a new mindfulness and sleep app that has won the best of Apple award and it's currently used by over 7 million people. It's a great all-in-one app for your sleep and well-being with thousands of meditations, sleep stories and so much more like cognitive behavioral therapy, life coaching and even breath work. Aura's content is created by hundreds of expert coaches and therapists around the world. It's highly customizable, notifying you about content that has been picked specifically for you every single day. You can also create personal playlists and work on mood trackers or gratitude journals, which is a great way to track your results. Personally, I am very, very picky when it comes to the background sounds during meditations. And on Aura, you can customize them. Do you like nature sounds? Great! Binaural beats? Amazing, they have them. Even white noise is possible. Aura is basically like a Spotify for your mind and soul. It has hundreds of guides from diverse backgrounds and unlike with traditional meditation apps that just give you a few coaches in a one size fits all package, on Aura it is very, very easy to find a guide that resonates with you. No wonder 87% of Aura users report an improvement in sleep and well-being just in the first three days. For me, Aura is really, really working. It not only helps me de-stress and stay calm long term, but it also provides awesome guided meditations for acute anxiety attacks. You can get started using Aura now completely for free on Aura's website by using the special link in my video description. 
The first 500 people using this link get a 7-day trial and also exclusive 25% off. That being said about today's sponsor, thank you again so so much to Aura. But let's get back to the Pisces Sun Scorpio Moon Leo Rising combination. So again, I already said lots of spirit work, spirit travel, divination, meditation, trance work, stuff like that. But then we have also the Scorpio Leo combination, which what they have in common is passion and sex and things like that. And also probably a little bit of painful work if someone pisses them off. So I feel like, especially with a Scorpio moon, which can be very vengeful, I feel like you don't shy away from painful work. It's not like you do it out of shits and, shits, shits and giggles, but if someone gives you the reason, you will throw a hex or a curse. But yes, apart from that, like sex magic, definitely very, very good. Maybe a little bit of glamorous here and there, but I feel like the Leo focus combined because, like, because of the combination with the Scorpio is probably more the sex and sensuality approach and less of the like glamour approach. Virgo Sun, Scorpio Moon and Taurus Rising. All right, so we have again the Taurus and Virgo combination, which again, there are so many, there are so many people who are apparently very inclined to do like heart, hearth and home magic. But with the Scorpio Moon, I feel like that is very, very similar to the Pisces Virgo Virgo that I just went over. Maybe with a little bit of a darker twist. So maybe instead of house spirits and local spirits, maybe it's more, it's more like your local graveyard spirits or your ancestors, for example. I would definitely see you have a huge ancestor altar at home that is tended to a lot. But yeah, apart from that, very, very similar to the one I just went over. Virgo Sun, Aries Moon, Libra Rising. An Aries Moon and Libra Rising, that's interesting. Again, because like an Aries Moon can get so, so angry and so vengeful. But then you have a Libra Rising and that usually wants to stay like balanced and harmonized. So I feel like there is a lot of underground anger that you don't really show to the outside. But still, that could work very well with like justice magic. I feel like Libra has such a, such a crazy sense for justice that even though I would not necessarily say that they would throw hexes and curses, I would still say that if they see injustice, they want to correct that. They're usually mostly the mediator though, but with an Aries moon, I feel like there is probably the will to also go further than that. So I feel like with an Aries moon and a Libra rising, a lot of justice magic is involved. Sometimes it could maybe be painful. With a Virgo sun, probably not too much though. If there was like another Aries placement or a Scorpio placement or something, or a Capricorn maybe, there would be more baneful workings involved. But I feel like if you have to, you will throw a hex to kind of correct an injustice that you see in the world. But it's not like your favorite thing to do. Apart from that, <laughs> I kind of feel like with the Virgo sun and the Libra rising, your house probably looks very nice and very clean and very artsy. So I would again probably say that there is some hearth and home magic involved. With Virgo, Aries, Libra, I would probably say it's also more of a ceremonial approach. Well, yes, Virgo, I, I kind of feel Virgo is like 50-50 uh, low and high magic, but with Aries and Libra, I kind of see more of a ceremonial approach to everything, like more high magic, less low magic. Yeah, I think I will settle with that. Libra, Sagittarius, Sagittarius. So I would guess Libra, Sun and Sag, Moon and Rising. That's an interesting one. I am not too familiar with Sagittarius, I have to admit. I just know that they always want to know everything and experience everything and that sometimes leads to them thinking that their opinion is the only correct one. <laughs> um, but they're definitely extremely adventurous, like one of the most, if not the most adventurous sign of them all. So that would mean for me that probably similarly to a Gemini placement, 
you probably need a lot of different things all the time, a lot of different practices. You probably dive into a lot of different topics. I don't really think that you only do ceremonial, like only high or only low magic. I feel like a Sagittarius just needs too much different kinds of things all the time. So I don't think you will settle with one of them. I could see a Sagittarius and Libra working together for like justice stuff. So maybe that is like a cause where your workings will go to. Yeah, I can't really say more than that, to be honest, because I'm not too familiar with Sagittarius. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Libra, Taurus, Libra. All right, you will you will already know what I will say probably because I've, I've, I'm having so many Taurus and Libra people here, which I love because I love both Taurus and Libra. But um, okay, double Libra. So definitely like justice stuff, art magic. It has to be aesthetic. It has to look good to feel good. Um, it will also again, most definitely go towards your home. So hearth and home stuff. Um, I don't necessarily see like any spirit work or anything like that um, because Taurus and Libra, Earth and air signs, not necessarily very inclined to work with the other worlds. With the Taurus, there could be some financial workings, not necessarily. With Libra, Taurus, Libra, I would probably say mm, hard. I'm inclined to say more of a low magic approach but I could be wrong with a double Libra placement. I feel like Libra could go both ways. With a Taurus though, I would guess that it's more of a low magic approach. Okay, then we have Cancer, Sun, Gemini, Moon, Scorpio, Rising. That's interesting because it's two water and one air sign. Gemini definitely not emotional and we have that one as the moon sign. Uh, but we have a Cancer, Sun and a Scorpio rising. That's again difficult. <laughs> I like a Gemini placement more as a sun or rising sign and less as a moon sign. Uh, I would like the, the Cancer or the Scorpio as the moon sign would have been much more easy. All right, sorry everyone. <clears throat> My camera decided it was time to cut me off. We were looking at Cancer, Sun, Gemini, Moon, Scorpio, Rising. Okay. Cancer, Sun, Scorpio, Rising. Even though none of them are the moon sign, I would still say Ouch. <laughs> I would still say ouch, yes. I would still say that there is like maybe some some love and maybe some sex magic involved. Like maybe some, not necessarily sex magic that it's just sex magic per se, but more like sex magic for sex in a relationship. I don't know, because like Cancer is definitely more geared towards love. But Scorpio, yes, while love is there, it's still more like passion and sex because of the Mars aspect. Maybe more of a low magic approach, even though there's a Gemini in there, but still I would say more of a low magic approach. Difficult, so many different things in there. I mean, with a Gemini moon, you probably do a lot of different things, I can say that. It's so hard because with the Cancer Sun, the first thing that pops into my mind is healing, love, and like doing workings for your family and friends and your loved ones. With Scorpio, my mind definitely goes to shadow work, spirit work, traveling the other worlds, divination, darker deities and spirits. But Gemini then again just needs everything all at once. I don't think you settle for one thing, so I probably also shouldn't settle on one thing. I, I told you what I think about this <laughs> the separate signs and I don't think that one of them overweighs the others. Next up we have a Gemini Sun, Libra Moon and Leo Rising. Okay, Libra Moon with a Leo Rising probably likes to look good and feel good and be like the center of attention and be like, yes, this is me, I'm looking fancy as fuck. So I definitely see glamours there, heavy glamours um, with Libras. I mean, Libra, I feel like Libras aren't necessarily the artists themselves but they appreciate art, um, but Leos are very artsy. So I feel like art magic is also up there. The Gemini, again, just needs everything all at once. I would also say with Gemini, Libra, Leo, there's probably more of a high magic approach and less of a low magic approach. The very rational mind of a Gemini sun combined with the, with the everything has to be like fancy pants of like Libra, Moon and Leo rising, I feel like that could show itself as like very fancy, elaborate, high magic rituals. I feel like that would be very badass. Like with 
crazy cool tools that you make specifically for this one fancy ritual um, and everything looking perfect, the altar being very stylish, I don't know. I kind of see that. Then we have a Sagittarius Sun, Scorpio Moon and Cancer Rising. All right, that is where I like to see a Scorpio. The combination of a fire sign as the sun sign and the Scorpio moon, I would again say probably baneful workings. Um, if someone fucks you over or a loved one because the Cancer is there and the Cancer... Cancers and Virgos are like the mommies of the Zodiac, so the Cancer aspect there probably also leads to the Scorpio moon, like wanting to lash out when someone wrongs your loved ones. The Sagittarius, I think it's so adventurous that it wants to experience a lot of different things. So it's probably hard for you to settle with one thing, but with the Scorpio and Cancer, because it's so water heavy, I still feel like there is still like a hard pull towards like divination and things like that. Maybe some love magic, maybe some sex magic even with a Sagittarius, like a fire sign, and the Scorpio, maybe some sex magic. I think I would say that. Um, when it comes to high or low magic, I don't think I could decide on one. And I don't think you sh should or would decide on one. Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Cancer. That is such an interesting combination. Hmm, okay, we have an air sign, we have a fire sign, and we have a water sign. I think that the combination of Aquarius and Sagittarius probably again means you like to, not only you like change in general, but you like to bring change and make change happen. So I could see that there is probably a lot of spell work because you want to bring in a lot of change. Again, because of the Aquarius, but also with the Sagittarius combined, your work would be very well suited to go towards activism. I can't really place the cancer in there. You are probably also very inclined to do a lot of workings for friends and family and stuff because like again the cancer, cancer is kind of a mommy <laughs> who likes to nurture people and care for people so when something goes wrong in the life of one of your loved ones that's where you probably also would chime in and be like, okay, I will do a spell for you for that to change your life into the more positive direction. I feel like Cancers are very, very suited to do like healing magic. But again, with Aquarius and Sagittarius, I don't really see that. Oh, we have an Earthling here again. Virgo, Sun, Taurus, Moon and Taurus rising. Okay, you know what I will say. Hearth and home magic. Make your home feel great, look great be tidy, um, work with hearth and home goddesses or spirits, house spirits. Frich, for example, Hestia, do like lots of protection workings for your home, but also with a double Taurus, especially with a Taurus rising. I would say there's also financial workings involved. So yes, it's a lot of like workings for like material stuff material gain but like not only for the home but a, like in general financial workings because you like to have like money backed up so you don't have to feel insecure Taurus are very very much about security so like it's both like protection and financial workings, so you don't have to worry about that I still feel like you could also do a lot of healing because of the Virgo combined with Taurus um, I feel like, I just feel like earth signs could be very well suited to do healings. Yeah, and I would definitely say you have a low magic approach, no doubt. Like three earth signs, all big three being earth signs, definitely a low magic approach. A more organized one because of the Virgo sun, so it's not like as chaotic as some low magic approaches can be. But I still would say low magic is your shit. <laughs> okay. I just have to say, by the way, I love heavy earth placements. Maybe that's because while my big three are not earthy at all, apart from that, a lot of earth. <laughs> a lot of earth and water in general. So I love me some earth signs. Okay, Leo Sun, Taurus Moon, Sagittarius Rising. The Taurus and Sagittarius combination is kind of hard because Taurus likes to stay in one place and likes to keep things as they are, whereas Sagittarius wants to adventure and go out there and experience all the things and do all the stuff. 
but there is with Leo and Sagittarius there is heavy fire involved so I would say that outweighs the Taurus and brings the Taurus out of its comfort zone a little bit maybe so while yes you probably do like to do workings for your home it's not your main focus your main focus is probably more like being outgoing, maybe doing some glamour magic, trying to bring in lots of different practices to get in different ideas, different stimuli, um, trying to see what works for you and what doesn't. So it's not like you do this one thing, you see, oh, that's okay, and you settle with that. Um, you do more, a lot of different kinds of things to see what works and what doesn't and what's true for you. I could see that the security aspect of Taurus gets picked up by the fire signs so that you're either doing a lot of protections, also like throwing a hex or a curse when you have to because someone threatens you maybe. I think that is what I would say for you. Then we have, wow, there's so much Sagittarius right now. <laughs> That's like my, my, my weak spot zodiac sign, the one I'm not very comfortable with. I don't, I don't think I have a single Sagittarius placement, just like I don't think I have a single Capricorn placement. And then we have a Sagittarius sun, a Capricorn moon, again a Capricorn moon. How does that work? Do you have emotions? <laughs> Sagittarius Sun, Capricorn Moon, Cancer Rising. Okay, that's interesting. I would see, probably with Sagittarius and the Capricorn, lots of like success business kinds of workings. I would also say it's more of a high magic approach. And the sun is coming out. I'm sorry if I'm very bright and here there's like no nothing. Ah, filming with natural light. <laughs> But still, okay, success workings, maybe like business workings. What was I saying? Oh yeah, more of a high magic ceremonial approach. Definitely not a low magic approach. I can't really place the Cancer with the Sagittarius and the Capricorn because they don't really have any similarities or parallels. <laughs> so that's a hard one. And I feel like the Sagittarius Sun and the Capricorn Moon, which are both like very very driven and they want to do their stuff and adventure and like get success i think that outweighs the cancer that wants to like stay at home with their loved ones and cuddle up and be cozy <laughs> i feel like the both of the two win probably all right aries sun cancer moon gemini rising okay with aries and gemini i would say you definitely do not stay in one place I would also say it's more of a high magic approach, probably. You like to be adventurous and do lots of different things and like dive into different kinds of practices and projects and workings. The Cancer Moon though, at least it's a Cancer Moon. <laughs> at least that's a placement where it's, it works. Um, with a Cancer Moon though, you li probably like to spice up your relationships, like do some, some passion or sex workings for your relationships probably because like with an aries aries is extremely extremely passionate and likes sex and stuff like that but a cancer moon is very much geared towards a secure relationship probably a very monogamous secure relationship and being like cozy and cuddly and in love um, but with the aries like the combination i feel like that leads to the aries placement wanting to get some passion and some some maybe adventurous sex uh, into the relationship. You probably don't shy away from baneful workings, especially if someone pisses off your loved ones. So not necessarily for yourself, but for your loved ones, you would throw a hex. <laughs> Next up, uh, Sun, Taurus. So a Taurus Sun, Cancer Moon, Libra Rising. All right, that's such a cuddly, harmonious big three. Um, so there's a lot of hearth and home magic, a lot of workings for your loved ones, especially with the Libra and Cancer. You just want everyone around you to feel good and to have a great life. So I feel like you probably do a lot of workings for your loved ones or to bring in harmony in relationships, bring in harmony for your loved ones. Yeah, also to bring security to both yourself and to them and into your relationships. Cancer, Moon and Taurus and Libra, I would guess that you maybe have a talent for like healing workings. Mm. Oh yeah, definitely a low magic approach, not high magic. Yeah, very down to earth, very geared towards making your life, your home and the life and the home of your loved ones like nice and harmonious and secure. Next up we have 
Taurus, Leo, Leo. That's a hard one. So the Taurus is very much about material, the, like the material world and more like in their body and being grounded and stuff. But Leo is very like sexy and out there and flamboyant and stuff. But I feel like the combination maybe could lead to a lot of like, not necessarily sex magic, yes, with a double Leo placement, sex magic, probably definitely your, your thing. Probably definitely. I would settle with, def with definitely your thing. But I feel like with the Taurus placement, is it is more like a sensual approach, like less of a hardcore like sex sex magic, more of a sensual approach. So like, Maybe yes, doing sex magic, but more like in the bath or something, feeling good, feeling your body. So things like that, maybe you do like sigil work on your body or stuff like that. With a double Leo placement, I also see glamour magic and success workings. I could also see love workings there with a double Leo placement. Then we have a Gemini Sun, Virgo Moon, Libra Rising. That is rather airy. And I would say a high magic approach probably works better for you than a low magic approach with Gemini and Libra and Virgo. While again, Virgo could also work with a low magic approach. I feel like with the two air signs, a high magic approach works better. With Virgo and Libra, again, I could see some hearth and home magic, but not necessarily as heavily if it would be like a Taurus Virgo. Because like, yes, the Libra wants everything to look nice, and feel good, but it's not necessarily as like grounded and material as a Taurus, for example, would be. I don't know if you could say that, like a high magic hearth magic, doing heavy like rituals, like ceremonial rituals to make your home feel good, like energy wise, more so than like enchanting trinkets and putting them somewhere less material, more high magic but still for the home, still for feeling good. But again, you have that Gemini there, so like you don't settle for one thing either way. <laughs> I feel like that's always, once someone has one Gemini placement, they won't necessarily stay in one place. Oh, I could see some like friendship or communication workings or things like that, because of course there's two air signs and they're like not all about, like Gemini definitely all about like communication and their friends and stuff. Libra, not too much, but still it's there. So I could see something like that. Then we have a Libra Sun, Taurus Moon, Pisces Rising. With the Taurus Moon, I will say it again, hearth and home magic. Uh, again, also with the Libra Sun, making everything seem and l like look and feel good. Um, the feeling good is the main point here, but also feeling good because it's a Libra. But it has to be like harmonious and balanced, everything has to feel nice. That will probably also soothe the Pisces. But with the Pisces and the Pisces again being so into like spirit work, traveling the other worlds, um, I feel like, yeah, Pisces always has like one foot in the other worlds. Probably seek out your house spirit or your like local spirits, nature spirits maybe some plant spirits in your home. I could see you being very good at doing divination for justice. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I know why, because of the Libra and Pisces, but just, just that just popped into my head. I don't know why. Okay, Sagittarius Sun, Pisces Moon, Taurus Rising. Oh, that's a hard one. The Sagittarius in there is hard because yeah, we have again um, the Pisces-Taurus combination, but like switched. Before it was Taurus Moon, Pisces Rising. Now it's Pisces Moon, Taurus Rising. And like with a Pisces Moon, there is like definitely a lot of divination, working with spirits, spirit flight, stuff like that, dream work, definitely lots of like dream work, dream divination. Maybe that's how you communicate with, with spirits and like less of a heavy hearth magic focus. But the Sagittarius in there is hard. I mean, I would say, the combination of Pisces and Sagittarius leads to a lot of spirit travel because like Sagittarius is the travel sign. And while yes, traveling physically fun, but like you have this Pisces placement, the Pisces moon. So I would say there's a lot of spirit travel, like a lot of adventuring in the other worlds. And I feel like that sounds very, very fun. So like lots of astral travel, lots of meeting different kinds of spirit, working with different kinds of spirits while the Taurus is still there. So I feel like you definitely do like 
heavy protections for those adventures so that you don't have to feel insecure because Tauruses like to be secure. I feel like that is where I will settle and I feel like that's that's such a fun combination. Now I want a Sagittarius combination for my Pisces moon, damn it. <laughs> okay, next up we have Leo, Capricorn, Libra. Heavy, heavy talent for success workings. Leo and Capricorn are both very like perfectionistic and they want a lot of success for their, li their life. Leo less so than Capricorn, but Leo, like Leo are extremely perfectionistic and Capricorn just wants to achieve everything that they can. So I feel like that probably means that you do a lot of success workings, especially for like the business work side of your life or like the finances side of your life. With the Libra, I would say the Leo and Libra combination could mean that you would be talented at like art magic because Leo is artsy and Libra likes art. I would also say that a ceremonial approach would be more your thing than a low magic approach, like less folk magic, more ceremonial magic, which I feel like is overlooked nowadays. Like everyone wants to get into folk magic, but I feel like that's just not everybody's thing. And more people should try to see if ceremonial magic or in general a more high magic approach works for them. Because I feel like that is, for a lot of people, that's that would be much more suited than more of a folk magic, low magic approach. So for you, I would say definitely more high magic. Oh, Libra and Leo glamours definitely do your glamours especially if you combine it for example do glamours for like business work related things do the glamour to for example seem more professional or to i don't know charm someone you're having a meeting with or something like that so gear your glamour magic towards your success business stuff that would be perfect all right, Pisces Sun, Capricorn Moon again. How does that work? A Pisces Moon and then a Capricorn, uh, a Pisces Sun and then a Capricorn Moon, uh, and a Virgo Rising. Okay, this is a hard one. I don't know if you're geared more towards high or low magic because Capricorn, I would say, is more high. Virgo is 50/50, and Pisces is definitely more low. So that's a hard one. Also, you have like the unemotional and not necessarily spirit work heavy Capricorn, but then you have an extremely otherworldly dreamy Pisces. So that's definitely a hard one. What I would say though is with the Pisces and Virgo, I could see healing magic be a thing for you. And I mean, maybe you do work with spirits and like use the help of spirits for, for the healing. That is possible. But then yeah, we have the Capricorn, which it's not a Capricorn rising, it's a Capricorn moon. So maybe it's like less heavily success oriented or work oriented so maybe it still has like a minor influence again i will i will get into the three separately because that's easier with these three um because they don't necessarily have that much in common the pisces very otherworldly likes like spirit travel working with spirits doing divination and dream work dream divination things like that Capricorn, very business and success oriented, money workings, things like that. But definitely a very big contrast to the Pisces. And then we have the Virgo, which I feel like should or do does have a talent for like healing stuff. It's also very, very much about hearth and home magic in my opinion. Then we have Gemini Sun, Taurus Moon, Virgo Rising. Okay, we have the Taurus Virgo combination again, so I would definitely say Hearth and Home Magic, but we have the Gemini in there too. So I feel like while a low magic approach is probably more suited for you, you still need lots of new stuff. Don't settle with one thing, get into various different kinds of practices that still kind of focus on more of the material aspect. If you want to work with spirits, which I don't really see here, although a Gemini is very communicative, so maybe that's where that comes in. But if you do work with spirits, probably more, again, hearth and home oriented gods or goddesses, house spirits, plant spirits, nature spirits. But don't settle with one thing, because then the Gemini will get bored, definitely. <laughs> Okay, let's do one more because I already know I have filmed for more than one hour if I have been cut off twice. So let's do one more. And that is a Capricorn Sun. Wow. Last time 
I said there are so little Capricorns and now it's like Capricorn after Capricorn after Capricorn. We have a Capricorn Sun, Pisces Moon. Yes, that's the right way around. Capricorn Sun, Pisces Moon, Libra Rising. Did I have one of those already? I feel like I had a very similar one already. The Capricorn Sun is again very business and success oriented. They want to achieve everything they can. The Pisces Moon though, again very very otherworldly. And then we have the Libra Rising in there. A high magic approach is probably more your thing. Like the Pisces can be more low magic, but since they are so otherworldly, it doesn't really matter either way because it doesn't matter if they do it in a ceremonial way or a folk magic way. As long as they work with the other worlds, it's fine. <laughs> so then with like the Capricorn and Libra, I would personally say probably more of a high magic approach. It's hard because like for one, you have like the Capricorn, which is so success and business oriented and usually more like me focused. But then you have Pisces and Libra, which are not necessarily me focused because like the Libra wants to bring in harmony and balance and stuff, but not only for themselves, but for everyone involved. And then you have the Pisces who is of course very, very sensitive. So they of course also don't like it being unbalanced or disharmonious. So I feel like there could be maybe a community focus there. Oh, by the way, I just realized with all, with all of the Geminis, Geminis would be so great in a coven or like in general working with some kind of community even like could be a coven, could be just a, I don't know, a regular meeting of people working together. I just realized that that makes so much sense. Same for Aquarius, definitely. Um, but I could also see that here because of the Libra, um, that it's like not necessarily just working in a coven, but working specifically to bring harmony into your community, like your local community. That kind of sometimes maybe clashes a little bit with the Capricorn, but I feel like the Pisces and Libra probably overweigh the Capricorn influence. All right, that is it for the part two. Again, I will probably do a part three, part four, part five, because there are so many different combinations of signs. Um, as always, Patron shout out. Thank you so, so much to SJ, Natasha, Anne, Kate, Cade, Thistle, Adam, Z, Kent, Kelly, Brittany, Amber, Celine, Smolkata, Josh, Elinura, David, Kristani, Rixie, Business, Anna, Lena, Ashley, Erica, Kristen, John, Phoenix, Jenny, Maggie, Misty, Amy, Bethany, Timothy, Coffee, or the Honorary Gossip Squirrel, and last but not least, Bjorn. Thank you so, so much for your continuous support. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as the first one. If you did, make sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up and definitely ring the bell down below so you're notified when I post the part three. <laughs> of course, you can check out my other socials or my shop for ethically and sustainably sourced witchcraft and paganism tools. And if you want to support me in another way, then check out my Patreon. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!